The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. This is Jennifer Schaus coming to you live from Washington, D.C., and we are continuing with our government contracting webinar series, summer of 2017. Thanks to everybody who was able to join us today. The webinars are complimentary. They run through mid-September, and they are all recorded. So if you need to jump off today early or you want to catch another webinar, uh, and if you've missed something along the way, you're welcome to download any of our webinars. They're all on our website under the webinar section. Uh, today we're uh, lucky enough to be joined by Danielle Carr, who uh, could be talking to us about contract administration, uh, and we will dig into her presentation in just a moment. Um, as I mentioned, this is a series uh, that runs through mid-September, covering a variety of topics on government contracting. Uh, a little bit about us, uh, based in downtown Washington, D.C., been in the government contracting industry for about 20 years and providing various a la carte services for contractors, uh, including GSA schedules, 8A certification, proposal writing, contract admin, and more. Uh, we additionally host some networking events, and stay tuned um, to our newsletter, which you can sign up for on our website and our events page on the website, which will keep you posted on events that we have coming up in the future. Uh, a little bit about me uh, is listed here on this page, but more importantly, we want to talk about uh, Danielle Carr, her background, and, um, and dig into her topic and area of expertise, which is contract administration. So, Danielle, I'll hand it over to you, and I'm going to mute my phone, and I uh, look forward to your presentation, and thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you, Jennifer. I do appreciate the introduction. Hi, everyone. Again, my name is Danielle Carr. I've been in the contract management field for about 12 or 13 years. Um, I started my career at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, and then I went to work for the Department of Transportation, and after that, I went over into industry, and I worked for Unisys Solar Systems, and I worked for Blue Island. At the present time, I am an acquisition program manager. I'm a consultant for a company called IFAS, and my client site is Washington Headquarters Services, which is a division of Department of Defense in Crystal City. And the topic that we'll be talking about today is best practices for contract management. I'm not sure of everyone's skill set, you know, that's on the call, but I'm pretty sure that everyone will gain something from today. So um, we can go to the first slide that starts with contract management. So when we talk about contract management, a few of the activities typically include ensuring compliance with contract terms and conditions, um, practicing effective communication and control, managing contract changes, accounting and voicing on payment, management of government property, resolving claims and disputes, and more towards the end, contract closeout. You can go to the next slide. And these are just some of um, the roles that are included in contract management, both government and industry. Um, you have program managers on both sides, systems engineers, um, government, you may have a contracting officer, industry would be a contract manager, um, government, you would have, you know, a compliance lawyer, some cost and price analyst, contract specialist or contract administrator, you'll have someone that, you know, manages the property, you'll have some budget and financial analyst and quality assurance specialist and logistics manager. And as you look to the right, you'll see I listed several roles on the industry side. Then as we move forward into the contract management process, I kind of did um, a deep dive into it, but this is pretty much just a matrix. It talks about some key inputs, tools and techniques, desired output, and if we move forward to the next slide, you'll see the breakdown of each one. So as far as key inputs, You can go to the next slide. So the next um, one or two or three slides, it just um, gives a deep dive into that contract management process matrix that I outlined. Um, so for key inputs, you have contracts, project plans and schedules, work results, 
contract change request and invoices. Um, you can go on to the next slide. The next one. Let's go down to tools and techniques. So under tools and techniques, you'll see where we have project management discipline. It says that all work to be properly appropriately led, planned, scheduled, coordinated, communicated, tracked, evaluated, reported, and corrected. Then you have contract analysis and planning. You know, this is when you develop a contract administration plan and assign the responsibility of administering the contract to other contract managers or other people within a life cycle. This is usually performed by someone in purchasing, contracting, or the subcontract management department. Then we move forward to kickoff meeting or pre-performance conference. I actually outlined a sample, um, you know, matrix of what a pre-performance conference would consist of. You know, meet via telecon, a video con, a web meeting, or face-to-face -face meeting. We would also establish protocols for written and oral communication, and you know, progress your measurement and reporting. Let's go to the next slide. This is the matrix that I mentioned that I had entered into the slide. You would use this as your baseline for um, creating a checklist for your company. And you can also use it um, as a guide. You can go to the next slide. These are just more on um, tools and techniques on the performance measuring and reporting you would observe performance, collect information, and measure the actual contract's progress. Um, you would also have resources devoted to these tasks that will depend on the nature of the contract work, the size, and the complexity of your contract. Um, your payment process, you would establish an adequate accounting, cost tracking, invoicing, and payment processes. Prime contractors and their subcontractors must submit proper invoice in a timely manner. But this also depends on the size of your company, on which tool that you want to use. Um, some people use maybe Dell Tech if they are larger or cost point. And for small businesses, they may still be using um, QuickBooks or a system of that nature. Then we move forward to contract change management process. Um, the requirements and circumstances changes in unexpected ways and contract terms and conditions must often be changed as a result of this. Let's go to the next slide. And these tools and techniques um, may break down, you know, dispute resolution if certain things come up. Um, I remember there was a time that I was negotiating um, a contract with Unisys, and it was with a Tier 1 and a Tier 2 sub. Um, the Tier 1 sub wasn't paying the Tier 2 sub properly, um, so we had to implement some dispute resolutions and finally do like a T for C, which is a termination for convenience, and remove that Tier 1 subcontractor and fully implement the Tier 2 subcontractor to uh, move forward and you know run the program um, according to the contract terms and conditions. And then you move forward to the supply chain management process. Um, I know a lot of people in contract management um, don't involve themselves as much with the full life cycle to include the supply chain management process, but it's very, very important because you have acceptance and then you have a delivery. And under the supply chain management process, it says efficiently and cost effectively manage subcontractors and vendors. This is vital to improve performance results, including the appropriate flow down of mandatory government contract clauses. And this goes into um, another training, which would be under subcontract management. Then we move forward to con the contract closeout process. And that's always a process that many of us, we don't like to do, but it's, it's also very, very important on the government side as well as industry. Um, this is a verification that all administrative matters are concluded in contract is otherwise physically complete. And also that the contractor has delivered the required supplies or performed the required services, and the government has inspected and accepted the supply services. 
Let's move forward to the next slide. And this is just a sample matrix of what a contract closeout checklist would be. Um, if y'all know you are a large company, you probably already have um, a well-developed matrix in place, but this is just a sample if you want to take from it and, you know, build upon your own. Let's go to the next slide. This is the output section. It pertains to documentation, payment, and the completion of work. In the documentation, you would want to provide proof of your performance, management of changes, and your justification for claims and evidence in the unlikely event of litigation. You always want to have a copy of the contract, external and internal correspondence, correspondence with meeting minutes, reports, and logs. Um, as far as payments, you always want to make sure that they are timely, because I know on the government side, you know, you are incurred, um, you know, interest if your payment aren't either with the net 15 or net 30, but you will want to pay attention to what's actually in the contract. Then it says the government should seek product and service discounts for early payment. Then with the completion of work, actual accomplishment of the government's requirement for product, services, systems, or solutions. And we can go to the next slide. And overall, I just use, um, you know, four terms to um, describe the full process of contract management, and that would be engage, manage, be fluid, and plan. And under engage, it is SRM, supplier relationship management throughout the organization. That pertains to the full life cycle. The contract manager is just one person, you know, amongst a full cycle of cross-functional teams that produce a product or service to an end user. You know, network, contract managers should ensure effective cross-functional team support within the contract management process. <clears throat> Dispute resolution, handle, handle directly with the supplier to prevent any third-party engagement where possible. Go to the next slide. Here we are with manage. As far as the performance, um, you will want to, you know, focus on key performance indicators, development and review. You want to pay attention to calls. You want to keep records for reporting and auditing purpose. You also want to focus on contract compliance. That's a really big issue for me, especially when it comes to auditing. Then you want to move into risk management. That's for safety, supplier financial stability, legal liability, business continuity, sustainability of your company as a whole, um, their security risk, and environmental exposures. Next slide. Next slide. Learn to be fluid, understand and identify issues, prioritize and resolve. Um, focus on, you know, change management, you know, be prepared for those things as far as contract changes, any type of changes with, you know, verbal agreements or performance changes. Um, try to enhance your planning capabilities. Gain understanding of the specific category of spend under your contract and the impacts of existential technology. Um, that could be, you know, anything product or service-wise. I just used an example of like artificial intelligence or machine learning or internet systems or forms of blockchain. Also disruptive existential technologies can dramatically change how contracts are constructed for client value optimization. And next, we're on the plan. You always want to have a plan, some some form of risk mitigation. You know, you want to you know track the changing business needs and your supply base as well for any form of support capabilities that may that you may need. 
You want to understand your market, the players, the industry, industry changes, any price drivers. You just want to know what's always going on and what's around you. Then for continuous improvement, how will your client continue to improve? And how will supplier, the supplier proactively improve and support your changing um, client needs? Contract management plans continued on this slide. Uh, basically, a systematic plan to achieve your both short and long-term goals for defined spend segment to optimize your total cost of ownership and reliability. And I also listed, you know, why do you want documented strategies to ensure complete alignment and joint ownership of strategies, goals, metrics, and priorities between the business and the supply chain, pretty much the overall life cycle. To expand value creation focus with emphasis on quantified benefits, to generate a collaborative focus on sourcing decisions, the right size segment of spend based on TC or reliability, to foster and improve institutional knowledge, organizational succession planning, and continuous improvement. And last but not least, we have milestone um, consideration. I always like to develop my milestones because it keeps me on track where I need to be, and it also lets me know where I, where I am going and exactly the timeline. <clears throat> so under the milestone considerations, you would want to assess your opportunities, review your spend and your demand plans, update your contract management plans, you know, talk to your leadership, talk to everyone that's included, and have quarterly, well, monthly reviews with everyone that's involved in the process. Also include these reviews with, with your outside business units as well, and share any market intelligence that you may have inquired with your business unit to forecast your budget better, um, to mitigate any risk, and to keep track of your contract performance. And the last slide is pretty much just a recap of everything um, that was mentioned um, on the webinar. And if anyone has any questions or would like for me to go deeper into any slide or point that I mentioned, you can call me, my number, is 240-784-7418 or send your questions to my email at dcar, that's D-C-A-R-R, -R, at ifas-llc.com. Great information. Thank you, Danielle, for, uh, for joining us today and sharing a wealth of knowledge on a very important topic. A lot of companies jump into government contracting and uh, as they start winning contracts, then they uh, are very reactive to the administration piece. So uh, obviously it's a necessary component and, uh, as I mentioned, very important. So thanks to all who were able to attend. If you do have questions for Danielle, you can contact her at the phone number listed and the email. Uh, she'll be speaking again on Friday on a different topic. Um, you can get the full list of all the webinars on our website under the uh, webinar section. So thanks again, everybody. Uh, this is recorded, and it will be available later this week for download. Thank you. Thank you.